right, students, welcome to Unit 9, Lesson 1, which is arithmetic sequences. So just so you know, my definitions are not going to be textbook definitions. These are going to be um, user friendly words that you understand. So on the first one, what is a sequence? So to start out, a sequence is just a list or a set of numbers in an order or a pattern. All right, and so you might see um, the first numbers might be like three, five, seven, and you'll see a dot, dot, dot to show you that that sequence continues. So more specifically, what is an arithmetic sequence? So arithmetic is a type of sequence and it refers to a sequence that has terms generated by adding the same number. Okay, so the same number that we're adding is actually called the common difference. So you can add a positive number, you can add a negative number, which you would think of as subtraction, and that means it's going to be arithmetic. So common difference, we let that be the lowercase d, that's the symbol, and the common difference is the number that is added. Notice I don't say subtracted to each next term or successive. Successive means next. So um, some patterns are going to be easy, but you can have decimal common differences, fraction common differences, um, and sometimes maybe you just can't tell. So how to find the common difference is if you have a sequence that is arithmetic, you are going to take whatever the next term is and you can subtract the previous term. And if you do that for every term in the sequence, if you get the same number each time, that's actually going to be your common difference. Okay, so on the first examples, they say determine if the sequence is arithmetic. So you'll say yes or no. If it is arithmetic, they want you to find the common difference and then also find the next three terms. If it's not, you just write not arithmetic and you move on. So let's look at the first. So our pattern is seven, three, negative one, negative five. So I can tell to go from seven to three, I'm gonna subtract four and three minus one, subtract four, subtract four. So I know since I have the same number each time, that's what I added. So it is arithmetic. Our common difference is negative four and I need to continue that pattern to get the next three terms. All right, so if I take negative five, so negative five minus four, and then negative nine minus four. So you can show this work on your assignment since um, the answers are provided. This is all you need to show to prove to the teacher that you actually understand how to find the terms that are being requested. And it doesn't take a lot of time to write that down. All right, let's try the second sequence. We've got one, two, six, 24. So here I am adding one, then I added four. So right now, since I know I'm not adding the same number, this is not arithmetic. There might be a pattern, but it is not an arithmetic pattern. And our last example, 20 to 22, 22 to 20, sorry, subtract two, subtract two, subtract two. So it is arithmetic our common difference is negative two. And so we'll find the next three terms. We've got 16, so 16, 14, and 12. All right, now an explicit formula is a general formula. Explicit means it's gonna be one general formula. And this is the formula that allows you to generate any term at any time. 
So for an arithmetic, the general formula is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 d. And I'll tell you what those stand for. a sub n. So n is going to be the number of the term. So this stands for any term. a sub 1, that stands for the first term. N stands for the number of the term, and in a formula, you want to keep this. And then D stands for your common difference. Okay, so how to find terms given an explicit formula. So they're going to give you this formula, like they have over here, and you want to find the actual terms. So step number one. Um, you're going to use the formula given. Step number two, you're going to substitute the values that you want. So if you want the first term, that means that n equals 1. If you want the second term, that means that n equals 2. If you want the third, and so on. Okay. And number three is you're going to simplify. So given the explicit formula, find the first five terms. So I'm going to map that out. So for my first term, I'm going to use one, two, three, four, five into this formula that's given. So if n equals one, I'm going to substitute 1. So 46 minus 10 times 1 is 36. And then I'm going to substitute 2. So 46 minus 20. And then I'll substitute 3. 46 minus 30. And as you generate some terms, you can actually find the pattern and follow it if you don't like substituting. But you want to generate a couple in before you do that. So I'm subtracting 10, subtracting 10, and I'm going to keep subtracting 10, which is really substituting 4. 46 minus 50, and those are my five terms. Now, we can find any random term at any time, and we don't have to find all the terms that lead up to that. So given the explicit formula, we want to find the 17th term, and that's the notation a sub 17. And we want to find the hundredth term, which is a sub 100. So if I know the term that I want, that's the value for n. So that means that n is 17. So 46 minus 170 is 124, negative. And if I plug in 100, we get 46 minus 1,000, which is negative 954. All right. So I already gave you a preview of that general formula. a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1d. So remember, this stood for any term. I'm just going to write it back down first term. n stood for the number, so I always just keep that as n. You need that in your formula so you can substitute the n values. And then d is your common difference. So on the first example, it says find the explicit formula. So um, if they're asking for the sequence, and we're in this section, it is going to be arithmetic. So I've got, I'm going to write down my general formula. And we're going to substitute what we know. So you're always going to keep the a sub n, because that's how we get our general formula. And we're always going to keep the plus and the n. So I need to find the other three things. So we're going to find and find. So a sub 1 stood for our first term. So our first term is negative 18. It's always n minus 1, 
and our common difference, we need to look at our pattern. So remember, if you don't know what your common difference is, you're going to take any second term and subtract the previous term. So our common difference is 30. Now, we want to simplify this expression. So we're going to distribute that 30. We get negative 18 plus 30 in minus 30. And we can combine the integers. So our final formula is 30 in minus 48. All right, let's try another one. So let's keep our general formula. And we're going to substitute what we know. So I want to keep the a sub n. Our first term is 22. We keep the n minus 1. And our common difference, I can tell I'm going to subtract 4, which is negative 4. So we're going to distribute that negative 4. And then combine the integers. So our final formula is negative 4n plus 26. And you don't have to write the n term first. Since they're being added, the order really does not matter. But the signs do. All right, recursive formulas are often misunderstood by students until they see it once. So first thing you need to know is on recursive formulas, there are two formulas for your answer. OK? So the first formula is going to be you need to state the first term. So a recursive formula actually um, it's a pattern to get each next term and you're not going to be able to find any term that you want at any time. You have to find all the terms that are before it. With explicit I could find any t the hundredth term just right off the bat. For recursive I have to find all 100 terms to get that hundredth term. The second, there's two different notations for recursive formulas. I'm going to show you one, but if you see a different notation, you're welcome to use that as well. So you want to kind of state the pattern, and you want to use the correct notation. So this is something you're going to memorize. So the notation is, is going to be a sub n, which stands for your next term, just like the general formula. And then you've got your previous term. And that's a sub n minus 1. That stands for your next, sorry, previous term. And then we want to find the pattern. So I'm going to leave this as a big box, and you'll understand once we get to our first example. But you need both of these formulas if they want the recursive formula. They won't say plural, they just state it as formula, okay? So let's look at the examples. This will be a lot clearer. So find the recursive formula for the sequence. So I automatically have to tell what the first term is. And then I need to find the pattern. So I look and I say, okay, well, we saw this before, and I, we know we were adding 30 each time. So that's going to be our pattern. The way we write it is we say, our next term is our previous term, and we add 30. These both together are the recursive formula. Let's try it again. So let's go over here. Find the recursive formula. So I'm going to state the first term. And if I want to find the pattern, we are subtracting 4. So my next term is my previous term subtracting 4. Okay, so notice when we did these up above, look at the explicit formula and then look at the recursive formula. They're not the same. Same thing over here. They're not the same. Okay, 